we'll have Freedom Block speaking. That's uh, Reverend Ray Green. And then Pastor DeJournette rounding out the, uh, the uh, pre presenters for the evening and offering comments both on behalf of this congregation and the family. Uh, just give us a moment to get situated and we should be starting very shortly. And if you all stand, that's, let's just stand. Whoever doesn't need a seat, we can just stand. If you need a seat, we can have a seat. Are we ready? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Ready? Everybody ready? Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Attorney Bobby DiCello, B O B B Y. DI capital C E L L O, lead counsel for the uh, family of Jalen Walker. My co counsel and partner, Ken Abarno, is here with us. Ken, K E N Abarno, A B B A R N O. Also, Paige White, P A I G E, from our legal team. And Joe Fouché III, Joe Fouché, F O U C H E III. Well, we're the legal team, and it's as if it's as if God knew hard news was coming. The weather changed from warm to cold. And in the last 24 hours, we've all been shaken by this decision of the grand jury. I am extremely disappointed in the presentation that had been shown today on the news or on the links on the internet, I am extremely disappointed in the manner in which the, the presentation seems to walk right past the legal principles that this family has been required to follow. I wish you could have been in the home about 4.30 p.m. when I broke the news to the family. I wish you could have heard and felt and seen the screams. There was screaming. I wish you could have seen the books that Jalen was reading before he was gunned down, execution style, running away from the police without any weapon on him. I wish you could have heard in his presentations that you saw the people he loved and the people he left behind and how he wasn't displaying any strange behavior. I wish you could have seen a young man in the prime of his life rather than a monster who has been vilified in the local media, not because of the media, but by virtue of the smear campaign that has been the city's attention getting and attention giving. I've spoke with many of the citizens of Akron, Ohio, and one of them said something to me that I'll never forget. For decades, the city government has let down the community. And for weeks, it has tried to convince you that everything's okay. Let the process play out. For generations, there has been bloodshed. Senseless, crazy bloodshed. And for weeks, we've heard, let's be peaceful. Don't get too angry. Before there was a reach out to this family, before there's been an apology, there were boards pointed or, or put up and bolted to the windows of the government buildings. Casting all of us who believe in justice as people who would rather destroy things than have fairness. And I stand to lose no matter what. I'm either too angry or not angry enough. This family is either too docile or too violent. They can't win. My legal team is either going to be smeared or lauded, depending on who you talk to, but nobody, nobody in this room tonight 
is happy. The things that have been said and done in this community have to stop. And those things that have been said and done have been by the police. They have to stop. And what we're going to do is continue the walk. Martin Luther King died on that walk. Jalen Walker was invited to the walk and he didn't know it, but he would live just long enough to contribute his whole body to it. And when I heard the chief of police say he wants, he wants no destruction, he wants no, no problems, he wants peace, he needs to hear that the family of Jalen Walker's hearts have been destroyed, his body has been destroyed, and our faith in this community, its leadership has been destroyed. I can't say it loudly enough. If you want to cry and if you want to yell, then do that. If you want to say what you need to say, say it. And prove the city wrong. Prove that you're not violent mongrels, which is what you're being painted as. Those of you who would support this cause. Prove them wrong. And take the kind of action that the Constitution allows and that I absolutely demand that is absolutely demanded on behalf of Jalen Walker. And so, having said that, <clears throat> let me gather my thoughts and introduce to you someone who's been a very, very valiant warrior in this cause for justice. Congresswoman Sykes um, brought the family to the Capitol, allowed Pam to sit while the president spoke the State of the Union address. She has put her money where her mouth is and her mouth where her money is with respect to these issues. She is absolutely committed to this community and it is an absolute honor to have her speak to you today on behalf of the family. Thank you. Thank you and thank you all for being here to show support to Ms. Walker in memory of her son, Jalen. My name is Amelia Sykes. I am the Congresswoman for Ohio's 13th Congressional District, and today I stand alongside Jalen's mother, Pamela, his sister, Jada, his grandmother, members of the clergy, civil rights leaders, elected officials, and concerned citizens who are gathered because justice has not been served. Let me first start by acknowledging the loss of life. A future cut short in a family and community in deep mourning and full of grief. We've seen this time and time again, and now it's here in our town of Akron. A routine traffic stop ends in death, and a family and a community mourn the loss of a son, a brother, a grandson, a friend, a neighbor. And this country and this community reckons with another tragic death. We find ourselves yearning for a justice system that protects all of us. Law enforcement officers take an oath. They take an oath to protect and serve. Let me say that again. They take an oath to protect and serve the public, and that oath is paramount in the ways in which they must operate within our communities. It requires them to be held to the highest standards, the highest possible standards, as they are trusted and entrusted with our lives and make split decision split-second decisions that can have lasting and sometimes devastating impacts. And when that trust is broken, and people no longer feel served by those who swore to protect and serve, trust erodes and our community suffer. Let me be clear when I say my disappointment today isn't a blanket attack on law enforcement. I recognize that our community relies on law enforcement officers and they are a part of the community. But their charge is to protect and serve. Protect and serve. And if you were like me, you watched the press conference and had more questions afterwards than you got answers. And I still can't comprehend how a young man has 46 bullet holes from officers and that is justified. And for that reason, 
As a member of Congress representing the city of Akron and its surrounding areas, I will formally request the Department of Justice to begin an investigation in the patterns and practices of the Akron Police Department. We need to understand and understand the process of how this department operates, the policies, the procedures, the training, and then start to look for solutions for a more community-focused policing that serves the needs of every segment of this community. As we heard our Attorney General say that the state criminal investigation is over, but that doesn't mean this opportunity to seek justice is over. The federal government can and should take up the mantle and investigate this police department and ensure that there is not only justice for Jalen, but that we don't ever have to stand up here and hold another press conference and mourn another son, daughter, friend, or neighbor of anyone in Ohio's 13th Congressional District. I think that we can all agree over 90 shots in seven seconds, hitting a human being over 40 times is in fact excessive. And it is my hope that the Department of Justice will take up this investigation and yield the data and evidence needed to implement community solutions based in evidence that restore trust and, ring and bring the community and law enforcement together. The urgency of this moment demands that we rise to the challenge of creating a community that is accountable to each other and promotes public safety and mutual concern. These are not mutually exclusive activities. Accountability and public safety must coexist together. There is no doubt that for many members of this community, today is as enraging as it is heartbreaking. And as people exercise their First Amendment right to protest, I ask that you do so without violence. We heard Bobby say it, prove them wrong. To Ms. Walker, Jada, to the entire Walker family, I know no words uttered today can bring you comfort. But your grace during this unspeakable tragedy has been an inspiration to all of us. And it is why I will continue to fight not only for your son, but all of our sons. As you heard Bobby say, I invited Ms. Walker to the United States Capitol for the State of the Union. She was my guest. And she joined me as we uplifted the names of young men like Jalen Walker all across this country to call for accountability. And I want to acknowledge my colleagues in the Congressional Black Caucus who have expressed their condolences and the simple fact that Jalen should be alive today. And they will work with me as we seek a legislative, a federally legislative response for accountability and public safety. The Walker family has asked us to keep Jalen's memory lifted up no matter what happens. And I will take up that mantle on behalf of our community because I am fully confident that I, not only will Jalen's memory be lifted, but that his memory will be a blessing. They've asked us to demand accountability and change, and I am fully confident our community, our city, will be the catalyst for the necessary change that we are all so desperately seeking, not just here in Akron, but across the country. And now again, I speak to you directly, my brothers and sisters in Akron. I ask you to remember the words of Jalen's family and honor his memory by, yes, speaking up, speaking up loudly and saying what you have to say, but please do so without violence. Because after the TV crews leave and the nation is no longer watching, it will only be us left here to pick up the pieces. Our community deserves a chance to heal and move forward, which we will do, we must do, and we will do together. And while we navigate our collective uncertainty around what happens next, one thing is certain, I will be here. I will be here with you. Akron is my home. I was born here. I was raised here. I chose to serve my community. And I'm not going to run away from this challenge. None of us will. And I'm asking all of you to stand up with us and stand up for Jalen and make sure that we have justice, not only for him, but sons all across this country. Thank you.
On behalf of the Akron Urban League, Ms. LeGrere. Good evening, everyone. Um, I stand before you today not only as the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Akron Urban League, uh, but as a mother of three adult black men. Um, and today is a heavy day. Um, we, of course, expected and hoped for and prayed for a different outcome. But the outcome that we got is one that we haven't gotten before, um, not only in this community, but across communities um, in this country. And listening to the press conference by the Attorney General's office earlier, um, I guess the thing that struck me the most was not only how everything was framed up on you know, making sure that there was a particular sort of way that the blame fell um, very strategically, but I just find it interesting that when you release 90 bullets that the, to say that you just won, you weren't sure if the movement was because he continued to turn over or it was because we were shooting him. Um, to me, that's an insult to our intelligence that you would say something like that and that you think we would believe it. The Akron Urban League, like everyone else standing up here, will continue to fight, continue to advocate for the black community, for people who, for whatever reason, during a routine traffic stop, can't seem to get resolved except by death. But we can watch serial killers get pulled over every day of the week and get arrested peacefully and live. There's something wrong with this equation. And when I think about the conversations that I've had with my sons and the fear that if they get a flat tire, they immediately call me and say where they are and how afraid they are and they want me to know where they're located because they've got to wait for help or they've got to call for help. It just shouldn't be that way. And I'm not even gonna pretend that I know what Pam is feeling. I don't wanna know what Pam is feeling. I wanna support her and love on her and pray for her. And my brother Robert, when I see the sadness on his face, that breaks my heart. This family should not be going through this. But everybody sitting in here today, let's continue to push for the right legislation. Let's continue to push to make change, real change, real change. We owe it to this family and we owe it to the black men who are, if they're not being gunned down, they're killing themselves out of despair and sadness and feeling like they don't have any other recourse. We got to change this, this dynamic. We got to change it. But I agree with Congresswoman Amelia Sykes. Let's not do it by tearing up our community. Because when everyone leaves, it's us. It's us. And keep in mind, a lot of these businesses that we're tearing up, they're black owned businesses. So let's continue to, well, let's protest. Let's speak our mind. Let's yell it to the rafters. But let's not be violent and tear up our own community. Let's just continue to do it the right way. Thank you. On behalf of the NAACP, Ms. Judy Hill. <clears throat> Some of us um, have been speaking to the media all day. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of having these conversations. I'm tired of the fact that not even in Akron, Ohio, can we get justice when 90 bullets. That's not enough. What does it take? What does it take for people to see what real justice looks like? I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm having a hard time sitting next to a family that's struggling because I feel their pain, because we all feel their 
pain and we can't get justice. Well, I just want to say something I said earlier to someone. You know, this is just the beginning. I want to put the city on notice. So we didn't get an indictment here, but there's an indictment on the city of Akron that there is change that has to occur. We have to change the policing in our city. We have to stop chasing people for a tail light, for crying out loud. Who are we? Who are we? What happened to the humanism in this country, in our city? So we've got to make some changes. We stand by our original demands. We want them to stop car chases. We want that pattern and, and investigation. We want to support what Sister Sykes said because we have to make these changes and we can't do it by ourselves. We're going to need each one of us to stand strong. And I can't say what others have said. Yeah, we all have to be here, but we need to let them know that enough is enough. You know, the only change that's ever really happened in this country is out of chaos. So I, 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 I'm not going to use the word peaceful. I'm sorry right now because my heart isn't feeling peaceful. My head isn't feeling peaceful. My head is saying change. Change has to happen. And this is the start, folks. So young people, I said it earlier in a video to you, do your TikToks, get on Facebook, keep it smart, safe, do what you need to do to keep up the heat. We don't want them to think they can get away with this again. Right. Thank you. And for Freedom Block, Reverend Ray Green. First, my, my condolences to the family, to my brother, Robert DeJernay, my friend. Uh, we've been on in this fight together um, in different avenues, and here we are standing together as one. To Pam and Jada, I love you, my heart goes out to you, and this isn't finished. We got y'all back. To Akron, I love each and every last one of you. No justice! No peace! Period. There wouldn't be no justice in Akron, no peace in Akron, Ohio. There would be no peace in Summit County. There would be no peace in the state of Ohio. There would be no peace in America until black men are able to walk down the street without being gunned down. Until black men are able to walk, wake up and walk outside without the fear of being murdered by state sanctioned violence. We will not rest. I am not here to condone violence, but I am saying that you have a right to be righteously indignant from these results today. Anger is an emotion that is felt when a, wrong, when a wrong is done to you. And this wrong is done to us too many times. To the city of Akron. Board up everything that you want to do. But we are coming. To my friends, to my brothers, to black men, we need you. To the gang members in the city of Akron, we need you. There is one clear and present enemy in this city, in this county, in this state, and in this country, and their name is Jim and Jane Crow, and we will not rest until we put them to bed. I'm not here to condone violence, but I am here to say that we will take back our community by any means necessary. It is up to us. We can no longer wait on an administration. We can no longer wait on the police department that is trained to shoot a person a hundred times until they no longer have life in their body. We will not rest. I am giving you an invitation if you didn't have one to join in on this fight. We will continue to register to vote. We will continue to run candidates. We will continue to take over the administration in an electoral manner. But Akron, Summit County, Bath, Green, Hudson, we are coming. And uh, Pastor Robert DeJernet.
First of all, <clears throat> I want to thank all those who are and have been supporting this family. I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts because it means something to us. You're carrying us where we can't carry ourselves. And for those who have reached out to me, thank you. And for those who have asked me the question, uh, I want to answer a question that has been asked. And that question is, how are you doing? The answer is not good. Our hearts are hurting. Our hearts are heavy. We talk about peace. Pamela and Jada are not feeling peaceful right now. We're not advocating violence at all, but we don't feel peaceful. They're broken into pieces. We talk about being calm. How can we be calm when the injustice we believe has happened? This is a sad, sad day for our family and our community. I'm profoundly sad. And I just wish that you all would just hear my heart. It's not over. We're not giving up. We're going to continue to fight. My faith is not in our judicial system. Amen. My faith is in God. Amen. He is the ultimate judge, and he will continue to judge. We are advocates for protest. Peace, as it says on the sign, is the absence of violence. We want protests. We, we encourage protests. But again, we don't want anyone hurt. We don't want any destruction to our city. But other than that, do what needs to be done so our voices can be heard. Protest is the voice of the unheard. And the city said that they're willing to hear us. Well, let's let them hear us. Hear us loud and clear. And I want to close with this scripture. It is Isaiah 58 in the NLT. It says, shout with a voice, with the voice of a trumpet blast. The King James says, cry loud and spare not. Shout loud, don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. So we have to shout loud and not be timid. And we want justice to be served. We feel that it has not been served. And we want to continue this fight until we change the systems. Because the system is not in favor of black men and black people in general. So we have to fight to the highest where we can. And we thank our Congresswoman for taking this steps further. And we ask that you continue to pray without ceasing. Pray for this family. Because this family is your family. We are family. And we just thank you again for all the support and encouragement. And we look forward to continue to push and fight until justice is served. Okay, uh, a few words from our legal team. Uh, I'm going to let my partner, Ken Abarno, address the group. I'll let uh, my uh, partner, Paige, address the group, and then I'll be taking questions from the uh, media. Ken? Grace and dignity. The Walker family is filled with grace and they're filled with dignity. They have been since Jalen's death in every way in which they've handled all of these very difficult and trying situations. 
hearing the family this afternoon when we had to deliver the most horrible news was truly one of the worst moments of my life. I can't even imagine the pain, the absolute pain that Pam and Jada and her family are continuing to go through. I see a, a shirt here, everybody versus inequality. We are everybody and we are going after inequality. We will not stop until we have the answers to the questions. The questions is to why, why we want every bullet accounted for. That is what was promised to the Walker family the first time that they were spoken to by law enforcement. Not a single bullet has been accounted for so far. People will have to answer the questions now. There is no shield available now. And we will push and advocate with grace and with dignity. And for those who disagree with our approach, they may attack us. And that's okay. Because all we need to do is look back to what happened to Jalen on that fateful night and realize and demand answers to these questions, accountability for every single bullet. We've heard this time and time again. How does a traffic stop end up like this? Congresswoman Sykes is going to push for accountability. That is vital. It is absolutely vital because our system has failed the Walker family. It is if there's no accountability here and we will not stand for that. We will not tolerate that and nobody should tolerate that. It's time to stop. And we will patiently, methodically move our way through the evidence and make our way to get answers to questions. No one's wanted to answer them yet, but rest assured, they will answer them now. I asked Jada if she had anything to say. And she had one word. When? When? Well, the time is now. And we will start. So when, Jada? Now. Thank you. Paige White. My partner, Kenna Barno, just asked, how does a traffic stop end like this? I can tell you the answer. It's because Jalen was black. Jalen was stopped because he was black. He was murdered because he was black. And there is no indictment today because he is black. We stood here almost a year ago and the chief of police told us that every single shot would be accounted for. And today the attorney general just let the entire world know and let this family know that Jalen Walker's life does not matter. That police officers can unleash over 90 shots and not a single one held accountable. In fact, they're back at work. And you have to ask yourself, where is our humanity? Mm -hmm. I think that we can all agree. We all want our kids to come home. Can we all agree on that? Akron 
police department officers, I ask you, do you want your children to come home? I don't care what he did. But let's be clear. When Jalen was shot, he was running away. He was unarmed. Those are two things that we know. And for any state official to stand up there and justify what was done to Jalen, shame on you. Shame on each and every one of you. What we saw happen this week in the grand jury was a miscarriage of justice. That presentation that they gave to the grand jury was one that was skewed in favor of the police. Jalen did not have a chance. And so let me tell you, City of Akron, you got the right ones. Because we won't stop fighting. I can tell you, my team, we won't stop fighting. And as Ken said, we have, we have questions, and you better believe we're going to get answers. I am heartbroken doesn't, doesn't capture the feeling. I, I talked to Jada earlier today, and she said, it feels like my heart has been ripped out of my body and stomped on in front of you. What Akron Police Department, when you call for peace, when you call for no destruction, when you call for respect, where was your respect for Jalen? So no, we are not condoning violence, and I'm, and I'm so sorry that we have to get up here and continue this narrative because we are asking people to speak up. Black and brown people, we have carved our way to justice from the beginning. It's never come easy, and it's never come fair. But I promise you we'll get it. Justice for Jalen today, tomorrow, next week, next year, I will not stop, our team will not stop. Justice for Jalen Walker. Okay, I'll take questions. Yes, Tara. Can you comment on the Chief's refusal to release the eight officers named? Yes, I think the names at this point might be the worst kept secret, you know, in the city. I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, I don't know what the, the concern is. You know, the, the narrative, though, is designed to continue the danger, the threat to law enforcement. It's all about what we present, we who oppose their point of view. We present this threat to their safety. And as I said in the opening days of this case, I've received death threats. My name is Bobby DiCello, and I represent Jalen Walker. Yes. Well, we're going to file a civil suit. You can print that. We're going to be filing it before the one-year anniversary of his death. I would expect it to be filed around June 1st to June 15th, something in that. Yes? Bobby, what would you expect? Do you expect you would get some of them to get indicted? Obviously, no one was expecting none of them. You know, I, I had a conversation with the two prosecutors from the Attorney General's office. I was told that in their estimation, they had a 51% to 50 some percent, greater than 50% chance that someone was going to get indicted. I was told that. I was told that. Now, I'm not bringing the prosecution, and I didn't see the evidence. But I saw what I saw on TV today, and that's what I'm commenting about. What I saw on TV, I, I, I can't say it better than Paige said it. Jalen didn't have a chance. If, if what I saw on TV was given to the grand jury, by the way, folks, there's one simple idea that all of us in law enforcement or courts and lawyers know, and that is you don't do a 2020 hindsight of what happened. I believe their narrative started when Jalen was in like the fifth grade and had a bad grade in school. He, they, they started with some seven, several weeks before these events to paint a narrative of someone who was seeking a gun and going to use it against law enforcement. That's just what I saw on this presentation. And again, if that's what they presented, well, that, that violates Graham v. Connor, that violates Tennessee v. Garner, that just violates the whole tradition. Since 1989, those cases have been on the books. And I don't understand it. Except, I have to say it, it doesn't seem fair, and it seems like it was because of who Jalen is. Yes. Yes. I'm not a reporter. I just listen to an action. Yeah. But I have a You may ask.
I, I don't have that answer for you. I wish I did, you know. Yeah, I stood up here in my opening remarks and half freaked out because I haven't seen in my lifetime anything like this. I, I, I just haven't, and I'm sorry that you had to see it too. Yes? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, my office will write a formal letter requesting a patterns and practices investigation from the Department of Civil Rights and the Department of Justice, the Division of, S of Civil Rights, excuse me, and the Department of Justice. Uh, they don't have to, but I do hope that they are listening to the voices of Ms. Walker, to the voices of this community, and take it upon themselves to find uh, the will to investigate what happened not only with Mr. Walker with Jalen, but the patterns and the practices of the Akron police that would allow for officers to feel like they could shoot 90 rounds, hitting a young man 46 times, and then handcuffing him afterwards. Yes, in the back. With their confidence in their internal investigation. <laughs> <laughs> what is my confidence in their internal investigation? Well. Uh, let's just rewind this moment in time. Uh, Mr. Kozar, who happens to be uh, both a police officer and union leader, actually sued the police department for giving this to, to um, BCI, right? So you can imagine what they're going to do in-house. Anyone? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I can't hear you. Hi, Gabriel. Well, I mean, this makes the case, doesn't it? That the, the civilian oversight of the police is an essential component. By the way, that's a request since 1968 that has been that has been working to emerge and become real here. Um, I want to thank all the folks, both in the stands here and behind me, who have fought that fight and gotten that legislation in place. Issue 10 was a huge victory uh, for the city, and we can't wait to see it fully fleshed out and working. Yes. Hi, Molly. Yes, Molly. Um, I was actually asking for Rick. Rick? Get with an organization and fight Jim and Jane Crow. What we've seen today was an extension of a Republican Attorney General and a Republican administration five minutes away from the largest Ku Klux Klan base. Um, the second largest Ku Klux Band Klan base in America. What I'm asking everybody to do, um, particularly black men, is to join an organization um, like the Freedom Block, um, like the Fred Hampton Gun Club, like the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, um, like organizations that are out here um, fighting against these injustices. Um, once we come together and join and, and build this army that we need to build, the first thing we can do is police ourselves and provide safety in our communities. The second thing we can do is control the electorate to make sure we got an administration that treats human beings as human beings. Um, and then the third thing we can do is get rid of these frivolous things that we use to build up um, the administration to by collecting tax dollars and fines and fees from tickets and being pulled over to build up the administration. This criminal justice system is about one thing, taking money out of poor, particularly poor black people's pockets and putting it into the hands of the administration. So any black man that is listening to me right now, young, if you're in a gang and you want to get rid of that energy in a more productive way, we will train you how to use a gun. We will train you how to protect our community because we is who we need to protect Akron. Yes. So we, we're going to do what the system allows right now because that's what we have. And I have to say that as an attorney here in the state of Ohio with a license in this state, I swore an oath to the Constitution. I swore an oath to uphold it. I swore an oath to protect the clients that I have and to make sure that that Constitution is applied. And I will, I will challenge anyone on the idea that the Constitution is meaningless. I think the Constitution does mean something. And I think that the courts 
should take this case into consideration and will, I hope, embrace it. That's my hope. Yes. Olivia, we, we've worked very closely. Um, I mean, we love, we love Pam and we love Jada, and it's, it's a real thing. Um, we want to make sure that, that at our expense, because of our energy and desire to know, we don't hurt them. So we're letting them go through this in the way they want to, and, and we'll cross each of those bridges as they come. Oh, yes, yes. Hey, Jim, yeah. You had suggested uh, or alluded to maybe the narrative, the presentation of evidence during the grand jury process. Do you believe the prosecutors involved were biased in how they presented their evidence? I know you don't know. You weren't there. But there's kind of been some alluding well, to that possibility. It's been, so I've been an attorney, you know, for 23 years anyway, and I've come to realize that power tends to protect power. And that's not something that power is always aware of, right? So when we ask for the powerful people with all the authority to be fair to the least of us, I mean, there is a song that I loved in church, which is whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. But power doesn't hear that song. Power doesn't hear that song. Another song that I remember when I was a kid and I was little, I'm 55 years old, was something's happening here. What it is isn't exactly clear in the Kent State shootings. The way government has treated and killed us is something that we really have to pay attention to. So when power examines itself, it usually creates strange and awful results. And that's what I truly think has happened. In fact, we talked about implicit bias. We talked about confirmation bias. We talk about that as lawyers because we don't try to bring cases from some sense of what we think should happen, but what really did happen. And here, it, it, justice was lost. Yes, way in the back. I have a question for like the organizers. And so we talk about like what does action look like and you know people one of the points is to get people in office. So we look at, you know, how many people vote for um, the board councilman, it's about twenty six thousand, twenty five hundred. Then you look at people who voted for Issa Kim, more people voted for Issa Kim than people voted for the mayor. And so I think that moving the city forward is possible. So we want people to get into action. For the organizations up there, can you give people Right. The first thing you can do is meet us tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at First Congressional Church. We will have more information in regards to that question at that point. Also, um, we do regular canvassing from 3.30 to 7.30 every day, registering people to vote. You can get involved that way. Or you could just stop at 848 West Exchange Street and talk to us. You can stop at the Akron Urban League and, and talk to Ms. LeGreer and Ms. and Dr. Ross. You can stop at the NAACP office and talk to Ms. Judy Hill and figure out what's your lane. There is a lane for everybody. Everybody can't go marching. We understand that. We need people to do research. We need people that are not on the front lines that can then go and, and run for office. We have a lot of new energetic um, uh, people running for office this year so we can help you we can train you to be able to run for office and help you design a campaign there's a lot of things that we can do together but we just have to come together and, and figure out what's our lane everybody can't fit in the same lane there's not one lane that got us here there's a lot of things that had to happen to get us here and we have to saturate those lanes and with different people that's in this room in different ways to be able to change this scenario in our favor and that's what you can do to get involved thank you anything else yes Well, I mean, the Department of Justice doesn't take direction from me. I wish they did. If they did, I'd, I'd say, uh, but uh, Council, Council, I mean, uh, Congresswoman, would you like to address any of that? Sure. 
Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, certainly that could be an option. Uh, but at this point, we are going to engage and make the requests that are most appropriate. Uh, there may be other federal agencies who can lend their investigative support and we'll continue to uh, research what is most appropriate and where we can seek to get some deliverable results, uh, not only just an investigation, but also pursuing federal legislation, which uh, we heard President Biden talk about during the State of the Union address this past uh, February. Okay, thank you all, appreciate you. So we are, we do have a, we have been planning for the last two weeks of community care program. That program starts tomorrow at 11. We will do a march and then after the march we will have uh, mental health facilitators, trained circle facilitators that allows us to um, form a circle and deal with the mental health aspects that comes along with seeing a young black man killed. And then we will have seven more days of these conversations to provide healing um, for our community. So you are more than welcome to join us tomorrow at 11. Um, at First Congressional Church. Thank you. Congregational. Congregational Church. The location is 292 East Market Street, Akron, Ohio. Thank you.